Alright, so this is a little short video on the Walbro fuel pumps that everybody talks about. Um, I seem to have a problem with low fuel pressure. And I'm not sure why I can't get more than 40 PSI out of this supposedly Walbro 255 liter per hour. Um, I've heard a lot about how there are counterfeits out there. And I really just don't know how to tell. I mean, this one says, Made in USA, stamped on it. I don't know if you can read that now. Yeah, Made in USA. But uh, I'm kind of horrified to see that where there was no fuel level, this thing rusted in a very short period of time. I may have actually energized it backwards one time, so that I might have actually screwed it up. But um, I'm not going to take the chance and use another 255. I'm going to replace it with the 450 liter per hour. Uh, notice it says TI Automotive. I'm told TI has been um, has been actually uh, Walbro since about uh, I guess the early 2000s. So this is uh, said to be a genuine Walbro 450. This one can handle E85 and although the closest E85 I have is about 80 miles away I just want to be ready for if it ever does hit here because they say it's a nicer fuel when you're going to do boost. Um, this one's got some kind of little rubber grommet that came with it. This kit didn't have that. So I'm about to see if I can retrofit this dude to there without doing some strange skullduggery or bracketry. And uh, I'll show you what I did to get to this without spending the hour of your life taking the tank off. So, using a cutoff wheel, I cut this piece out of the back, under the hatchback, to get to the cinder and all these other deals here, uh, I suppose. Yeah, this is for your fuel cinder to tell you how much fuel you got in for your gauge. This is for the charcoal canister for fumes that come up when the... The fuel pump's running. Obviously, you're going to have fumes when the return comes back and pushes all that fuel back in there. Um, and then you can see my fuel filter that I put in. That's a stainless 40 micron reusable filter. I thought it would be easier there than to get up under the axle every time to change or clean an air filter. Or, sorry, fuel filter. So that was my uh, solution for that. And I'm using... All PTFE stainless braided cable. Um, I've been using a company out of Colorado called AN Fittings Direct. They're very fast. I find that their uh, hoses and fittings are of high quality. And uh, I may do a short video on how to actually make those cables because it's not very clear when you get them how they work. Anyway, I digress. So I'm thinking right here what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to use that same rubber grommet that centers this fuel pump for this one. I've got a new sock filter. I also ordered the, the modification kit that comes with this guy in hopes that some of it's going to work with this application here. So let's start wrecking stuff. Alright, so I put it in place with the rubber grommet. One thing I'm noticing already was the rubber grommet that came with the 255 liter per hour is molded to fit these two little TDs right there. This dude has something a little bit different, but it seems like it's sitting in there nice and tight. And another thing is that I'm not going to need much hose because these are just butted right up against each other. So it looks like the hose they provided which is about two extra kilometers longer than I actually need. I'm gonna have to chop that dude and put some clamps on it. I really don't feel good about using those crappy old clamps that rusted already. So I'm gonna get some new ones, I reckon. Uh, and it's important to note here in the Gulf South, with all the salt air that we have, there is no such thing as stainless steel. Every stainless steel I've bought for this car already has rusted in some way or another, which is kind of a disappointment. But hey, we live and we learn, don't we? And another thing that comes with the kit is this sock filter. The sock filter 
goes on the bottom of the pump there I guess uh, that's your pre-filter that heads off anything big hopefully getting into the fuel filter system or even into the filter itself I guess um, even having one upstream from that's going to help which I guess is why every manufacturer seems to do that so this has to snap in place I believe I'm going to have to take it back off and do that all right, so here is issue numero uno for the day. The sock filter fits on there. There's a bit of a, a dial pin to locate the sock filter. And this rubber grommet I've got here that sits in the hanger, it seems like this middle piece is interfering with that. So sadly, I must whittle some of this out of there somehow. Although I'm not sure how you would whittle rubber, I'll probably just have to cut it. I'm not afraid. I've cut a lot for this project. It's amazing the things that you just don't consider when you're trying to swap an engine or upgrade a fuel system. It is the devil in the details for real, folks. Alright, so using a uh, straight razor type razor, I guess a uh, box cutter uh, construction type razor by hand and you know not requiring an emergency room I managed to notch this piece out so let's see how it goes so <clears throat> it seems that it became necessary to also remove the little do flaps on the bottom or cooter flaps whatever you want to call them because this was interfering also with that guy right there so let me try again you know just like pipe fitting fitting any f bushing or washer or bolt requires a little bit of finesse this one's requiring a little more than I care to admit so now the problem becomes that this rubber piece is too high up for the sock filter to get under it so I'm gonna have to slice a bit of thickness off of it somehow on the bottom edge instead of the top and so by the grace of Shogun I was able to slice this thing without having to go to the walk-in clinic or severing any major arteries. Let's see how this is going to fit now that the profile of it's a little bit lower. All right, so this is the result here. Let me turn back this camera. I swear to God. So this is the result here. Um, it's not perfectly straight, but I'm happy enough with that. You can see now it's not butted right up against the, the barb on the metal. So, let's see what we can do with this. Alright, so, man, I keep having to turn the camera around. Not, not watching the instructions or anything. I finally got this thing put together the way I'm happy with, I guess. I cut the piece to length. And this guy is a bear to get on. They give you some really high quality braided hose right here. This is probably the weakest link in my system now because it's not PTFE or stainless braided. But uh, I'm happy with the way it's sitting on there now. This seems like it's on there pretty good. What I usually do is put a little lube right here. I find that two cycle oil is thin enough so that you don't waste time waiting for it to get coated on everything. And it it lubes itself pretty well like it ought to all right and there it is uh, this is going to be the complete assembly I mean minus of course modifying this it came with a plug but I really don't think it's a good idea to put this plastic plug and this harness here uh, submerged in gasoline although I can't imagine how a spark would occur if that plug stays tight but I'm a bigger fan of soldering the wires together and at the very last resort maybe using these little barrels that you crimp. But I will leave that up to everyone else's opinion because I know we all have our own opinions. But uh, anyway, this was my fix for using the stock MK3 Supra pump hanger um, to put a the 450 Walbro E85 pump on it and uh, 
anyway uh, I guess I'll conclude it at this point because I'm not gonna get into soldering or anything else that again we all have opinions on so I hope this helps someone and I think the reason that I do these videos is because I try to search for any information on this because I've been doing this 2JZ swap for going on two years now. I get some answers, but there's a lot of stuff that's left out there to, to, that there's just no information I can find on. So if I'm doing a video on it, it's because I can't find anything about it out there that's in enough detail for it. And the, when I start thinking about the things that just aren't out there, I'm going to post more. So this is really just the beginning. I'm actually going backwards because I could have started videos on doing the engine and uh, you know cleaning it up and all that. But I think as I put her back together, I'm going to do more and more videos. Um, it's insane the amount of mock-ups I've done on this car already to, uh, to make the old stuff fit. And uh, that's her right there. She's nothing really to gawk at right now without the bodywork. And I have some kind of leak up there. That I have to deal with later but as you know the important thing is the engine because you got to go fast fast right anyway y'all have a great day I hope I helped somebody